Welcome back to the Diecast Museum. Today it is moving day. No, not real moving day. I'm moving Hot Wheels Car Culture Premium Line and Fast and the Furious Premium Line Hot Wheels off of the walls in the uh, larger portion of the Diecast Museum. There's two rooms to this museum mainly. The Hot Wheels room, so to speak, and the, uh, the rest of the room here. Which, of course, is where I have everything else that's not Hot Wheels, but also Hot Wheels have made their way to several of the Plano cases over the years. And they've been here quite a while, but we're actually going to be moving just a few of them today as I finalize this plan or idea in my head, one or the other. I think it's a plan. I think it's going to happen. Uh, and I will explain that in, uh, in a few minutes as we get into this video. But the cars that are moving today are the car culture vehicles that are team transport. And this, of course, is so that I can go ahead and open up my team transport duplicates purchases that you saw in the last video. Um, this little set of cars here that I'm pulling off my car culture premium line case is a team transport vehicle set and uh well there's another one that's a team transport porsche rwb that's a nice one coming with me little guy you're coming into the hot wheels museum portion of the die cast museum and it's a little dark over here so anyways i'm gonna find the truck for that one i don't know where the truck is exactly it's hiding in here somewhere with uh all of these green light trucks but uh, I'll find that in a moment well I will be darned I, it's not where I thought it would be it's actually all the way down here on the bottom of this wall in my shelving so it didn't take too long for me to guess that's probably where I would put a vehicle that doesn't fit the Plano cases due to its length and here it has come down to the shelf and it's got an old Dodge Ram from uh, who knows what. I don't know who makes that. Uh, looks like a hmm, racing champions. Maisto, Maisto, probably a Maisto. Anyways, that's what it was holding. And here's the truck. It goes with that Porsche. Well, I found all the sets, got them together here, ready to load up and head to the Hot Wheels Museum. First, we've got one more truck. That came in the box set with three other premium car culture trucks. And, uh, well, that little truck doesn't come with it, but that's probably coming with me anyways. So, to the Hot Wheels Museum we go with all of these cool little car culture trucks. No Mr. Forklift, you can't come. Off to the museum. And, of course, we've still got quite a little mess to navigate getting into the museum. As I have the box sortation unmoved at this time. Nina is just loving the new exploration areas. And uh, is having a field trip in here. So, we both are. Makes two of us. And hopefully... Uh, this is entertainment for you guys as well. So we've got car culture out on the table here. Where are we going to put all these vehicles? I mean, they're not fitting Plano cases out in the diecast museum area. So how are they going to fit in here? Which is wall to wall Plano cases and every other available square centimeter of space currently occupied with vintage Hot Wheels. Check out these old steering rigs trucks. Very cool. And so, yeah, none of that's moving, but I have found a place that works out quite well in the past for storing Hot Wheels that are too long to fit the Plano case. And that is at the top. So I always leave a couple inches, preferably, from the top to the bottom of these cases in the ceiling. And as you can see, we can put a steering rig uh, steering rig. We could put a team transport truck up there, no problem. And even with a tall vehicle on its back, no problem there either. So that works out pretty good. So if you want to do a test before you hang your Plano cases and take advantage of that space for longer vehicles when you mount them on the wall, 
take whatever you want to display up there, take the measurement and hang your cases lower from the ceiling than what you need, or the opposite of what I just said. Anyways, we're going to finally open up some team transport trucks, and that is this full set of three, so that we can put them all on the wall, and here's my idea, eventually, not those ones, I like, I really like these 1980s and early 90s Hot Wheels cars, so not to say I don't like the late 1990s and early 2000s cars, but all of this stuff has been on the wall for ooh, at least two, three, probably more years. I mean, more and more gets added to the collection and the wall almost every uh, every few days. One car here, one car there, but I can keep track of what I have on my Excel spreadsheets, which are very detailed and uh, extensive stuff I've worked on over the years keeping track of my collection. That can always assist me in finding these cars to display them again in the future on a larger Plano display case wall in a bigger space, perhaps. Uh, in the meantime, the cars will basically go, theoretically speaking, of course, we take all the vehicles off of the wall and put them into a secondary case, one that has a lid, versus actually taking the case right off the wall because I'm going to immediately refill these cases on the wall with nothing but premium Hot Wheels uh, cars of all types sorted, perhaps uh, in a cycling sort of fashion. So maybe one video, they'll be sorted by um, release date and set. And then another video by type of car or, you know, castings. Themes, perhaps, like um, every Fast and Furious car from one movie in particular. Something like that. Something cool. Anyways, lots of uh, good ideas. I think that's what I'm going to do. I need a kind of a big change in the Hot Wheels room to really reinvigorate the channel. It's been a while since there's been a big change, other than just an ever-increasing pile of stuff on the floor. Hmm... Got a bit of a thumb smudge on the roof there. <sighs> now you never want to over polish your cars, even with a really brand new soft chamois like this, which is the pretty much the bare minimum for protecting your Hot Wheels paint. Does a great job for cleaning it up though, if you get a couple thumbprints on your car. And uh, the secret ingredient being a breath of uh, warm air on the vehicle first. But that will be ready to go on the shelf. And I'll do the same with all the rest of these and we'll, we'll find a place for them. And so it begins. An invasion of not only car culture, Hot Wheels Premium, but other interesting rigs and their kind of carried vehicles, I guess. Well, here's a bus. But there you have it. Lots of room for some of the team transports. And what do you know? Even the Maisto 164 scale Mack truck fit with just enough room left over under the hook. Over the hook. So I would be theoretically replacing back some of these cars. Which ones would they be exactly? Well, I'm thinking... It'll motivate me to continue at a regular pace with the Hot Wheels year-by-year -year videos. So as I make room doing each year, or in this case, series number of vehicles through the uh, early to mid-90s, I think we're somewhere around 1997, so a little, not early, late to mid-90s, um, I will remove the cars that have been reviewed and put them into storage. So that's going to be basically cars released after the promo series and I may move my promo cars these are extending all the way back to 1990 to 1998 I think or maybe 2000 yeah so there are a few cars from 2000 there's a few five packs from back around that time period as well um, I haven't reviewed those as part of the year-by-year -year car collection yet because they're not really complete although I do have a lot of those Hidden away in boxes elsewhere, still in their five-car pack sleeves or packaging. 
but that's for another day. So I'm thinking maybe this stuff in the corner will go, and I may end up putting the premium cars around this wall as I go through the Hot Wheel year by year and finish off all the cars you see here in those videos. So that's quite a few videos still, but I have a lot of cars to move and there's no real rush. First things first, I got to put these boxes away in an order that I can find things easily. Most likely with some sort of uh, system I'm going to make and write down like a, a map of what I have and where they are in relation to, say, uh, the front corner of this table. So that way I can kind of know where to dig when I need something if I ever do. That is until such time that there's something to do with them. Because I've already got one set opened up and if I don't, then they are going to be opened up very shortly. Fast and the Furious. Um, Formula Drift. And so much more. Got so much more. And I gotta make that's the other thing. I, I'm running out of room for Green Light M2 and Auto World, Johnny Lightning. That's kind of one of the main reasons why it's just sitting here, in addition to me not making enough time to do these review videos quickly enough. Quickly enough, as in to keep the floor clear of backed up items I'm not quite ready to put away or you know get have them get lost in the labyrinth of diecast that is the diecast museum now back to the task at hand I decide I'm going to preserve the packaging best I can for this vehicle and uh, maybe I will end up recycling it but just in case you uh, do want to save your packaging this is how I recommend opening them. You can just use a small hobby X-Acto blade. Follow the uh, hovering just above the cardboard so as not to catch the cardboard. Start by just jabbing in there at the uh, top where you want to make the fold and work your way around. Right here, there's no attachment between the plastic and the card back, so you don't have to go in between and try to line up both cuts. From there, you can carefully remove the inner packaging, leaving a pretty nice looking original shell. I mean, yes, the plastic is cut, but I don't know, I collect a lot of things that I've opened and it still has value to me if uh, it's the only one that I have. In this case, I do have two, but I thought I'd share with you what I plan on doing with the other team transports that I don't have two of. Certainly, I want to keep that uh, card back because it does have some nice artwork and some information on it that is valuable to me as a collector. But here it is. Loose. I've already gone ahead and opened this one as well. One more to cut after here. Very nice. From here, they're going to be a little less lit because they are going up to that upper shelf and it is not really under any direct lighting. So that's going to be uh, probably the last time I get to enjoy them under bright lighting. Well, that is until I pick them off the top of the shelf. It's kind of high though, so. So I even start on a different spot there. So now I'm going to have to commit to it because I don't want a jagged edge. There we go. I did catch the cardboard just a smidge. Is that going to show up? Yeah, you see I nicked it. I don't care. Whatever. All right. There it is. Let's take a look at this truck and boat. It seems to be... I think it's just sitting on there for now. Wow. Oh, yes, it is. Good catch. I see it's got some sort of little rack. We'll look at that in a moment, but there's the truck. I don't know why I pulled this one out, but not the other one. I guess it looked like it was... For some reason, I thought it was going to be attached somehow, but no. And I'm glad it's not, actually, because uh, I'm going to put a car on there, maybe, to see what that looks like. And now for the Formula Drift. I've not made any additional space here to work, but that's okay. These ones are just smaller examples. 
Oh, I just jammed the knife straight into the tire. I have to check for damage there. Boat's trailing around on me here. What has gone on here? Oh, this one's this one's kind of a fail, potentially, if I've jammed that tire first. Let's just look at the car. Pretend that never happened. I've been wanting to open this one for a long time. Got some zoomage on the car. Very cool. I'll put that in with my other Fast and the Furious cars. Well, actually, no, that's not the Fast and Furious. Sorry. That one is Boulevard. <laughs> what am I thinking about Fast and the Furious for? I wonder why. I don't know why. Okay, we gotta check the tire. Which tire was it? See, I've already tried to forget what I've done here. That tire looks okay. It was definitely the front tire. Hello, camera. Hmm. I don't see any damage. Well, that's a good thing. All right, no problem. So be careful with the little knife. The little kniff, it is very sharp, and uh, if you're kind of not really paying full attention or trying to hurry, you can cause a bigger problem than potentially you would otherwise want. These team transport and car culture vehicles are absolutely stunning. Check it out. Let's go in for a close look at these outside of their packaging. Yes, the boat's over there. Even though it's a very clever idea for this truck to carry a boat, I thought I'd put my Formula Drift on there since I did open up that as well off camera. There's the van with the trailer and the MG. It's uh, kind of an interesting looking van, but I really love the paint color combos on these vehicles. The little right-hand drive MG is absolutely clever as can be. Very cool. And the Mercedes is also a really nice looking car. Check out the graphics or livery or whatever you want to call it. Very cool. Another last minute decision as I clean up the team transport trucks down on the ground there. Pretty much almost the ground. I had a pile of team transports. And this was a duplicate in there. So it is also getting up, opened up. Number 46, the retro rig. And I've, I have to admit, I've already cracked it open. And guess what? It's beautiful. And mm, the VOCs are just amazing on this white truck and car combination in the premium line. It smells lovely. So that's coming out of the packaging, and it is going to join the rest of these vehicles in the background up on the display wall. What a nice looking rig we have here, and a very cool Snake 2 car on the back of the matching truck. Awesome, I love this truck, and this car as well. Let's just spin it around here. Check out the back. Kuda. Now, is it a funny car? Does it open up? Yes, it does. I thought so. Very detailed engine. Chrome plastic engine and roll cage in there. And a die cast metal chassis. Very cool. All metal truck with plastic back. Just when I think I'm done, I found another stack of these team transports. They were by the entry door near all the boxes of cars, and I'd actually seen them earlier in the video. So I got to open those up as well. Might as well, right? Like, pretty cool. Been sitting there just waiting for something to happen, and that's what I'm doing, I guess. I'm just winging this video as well. Putting together stuff as I'm pretty much heading out the door to go up and make a tea. But uh, yeah, saw the stack and had to open these up as well. So we got another white truck and car combination. You know what that means? Mm hmm. Just as yummy. Just as yummy. So let's get that out. I'm going to go quick here. 
quickly, I think is the proper grammatical way of saying that. But anyways, check it out. The line kind of follows the car and the truck. Not quite. Well, yeah, it actually does. It just goes up and down like that versus swooshing into it, such as that. Or maybe even like that. Anyways, very cool combination. Desirable little car. Little Supra. Very cool. All right, next vehicle coming out of the package. It's a Corvette C8R. And carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Pretty cool. Looks like a nice ramp truck. I like it. Not sure what it exactly resembles. Something. What do you guys think? What do you think this truck looks like in real life? What's it based off of? Uh, there's the car. We know what that's based off of. C8R Racing Corvette. Very cool. Okay. Got yellow competition vehicles there. Yellow as the base. And then one more. Volkswagen IDR. Aero lift. So these were collecting number 35 through 37. And out they come. There it is. Ooh, shiny. Someone's going to get some fingerprints. We'll, we'll dust them off. Don't worry. Oh, I like that truck a lot. And the car. For one second, look at the truck first, though. Check it out. Dark, black, mysterious look with the blue outline looks like it's from the future or something sort of a futuristic looking truck i mean they both are they're both the same truck it's uh aero lift on two of these three collection vehicles which is fine because they look wildly different white and black paint jobs on them and completely different graphics on them but this is a really cool car i don't think i've opened up a Volkswagen IDR before from Hot Wheels. Makes me think it would really zoom on the raceway. So more vehicles yet again to find a home for. You know I had to do it. I had to pan in and look at these trucks and cars on the ground level. Wow. Very cool. Now we've got ourselves a race meet. Very nice. Everyone's meeting up here. Take their vehicles out on the track where it's safe to race them. Safer, I guess. Well, would you look at this? The back of the truck comes off. I, I did have to carefully pull straight up on it as it has a little clip there holding it on. And that's about it. So it does slide. It's a sliding ramp. I didn't realize that, but I took it right off, and it gives the truck a really interesting race look to it. Out the ramp. Almost Dakar Rally if you could fit some bigger wheels on it. Or a lift kit and then some big wheels. Anyway, so the ramp slides. Very cool. Roll back ramp on the truck. It doesn't slide well, but it does, I guess. Maybe with two hands versus one. Kind of hard to do. Oh, I see. Just like that. Pretty straightforward. When you've got two hands, oh, that would probably happen in real life too. Mm, up the ramp. Hmm. Okay. And this one's just, it's not happening. What about this truck? Does it do it? This is the, uh, is it a DAF? I don't know. It does. It has a... Oh, okay. Doesn't... Oh, okay. It does tilt. It's a bit of a spoiler interference issue here with the Mercedes as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I think we've decided uh, as much as we can on these. This one's just a cast base. It's the heaviest of all the trucks, in fact. 
I'm not sure. I think the chassis part is plastic. That black piece is plastic. But the rest of this truck, all die-cast metal. It's definitely the heaviest of them all. This one's plastic on the ramp, as are the other ones. Yeah, cool. It may be hard to tell from back here, but there are now Hot Wheels team transport trucks up by the ceiling, top of the wall. And yeah, they're going to be a bit hard to see. So I'm going to have to zoom in, move along slowly. And it is a little dark, so it's not an ideal situation. But it's somewhere to put them outside of their packaging, and I don't have any more room on my walls for Team Transport still in their packaging. And since I have duplicates, this seems like the best kind of way of doing it for now. It will make a lot more sense when there are Hot Wheels car cultures in the room as well as the car culture Team Transports. And of course, here we are phasing out of team transport and going back into what has been here all along, which are Peterbilt dump trucks that also don't fit in the Plano cubbies. Stay tuned for the mystery box reveal of all the cool die cast I picked up at the local die cast store, as well as some other finds and things I've had sitting around on the floor that need to be checked out. A lot of old cars in here, lots of interesting things. So let's get into that next time around. Hope you enjoy the video, and as always, if you're after anything, happy hunting.